This is Twit. Gurman's uh, Power on Newsletter this Sunday said the uh, Apple's uh, focus will be on health. He, he quotes uh, Tim Cook saying, in the long run, uh, Apple's uh, going to be best known for its health initiatives. Its greatest contribution to society will be in healthcare. He does mention that glucose, non-invasive glucose monitor, which is they've been working on, they say, Gurman says, for 15 plus years. Uh, the idea originated when Jobs was alive, which is, yeah, 15 years ago. Uh, to add a sensor to the Apple Watch, it's difficult, right? Yeah. Uh, he says Apple's health team is working on something that could have a quicker payoff. Project Mulberry. It involves a new revamped health app plus an AI health coach. Uh, that's kind of interesting. You know, remember, Apple might have a lot of ideas, but they have to get them past the FDA. Oh, wait a minute. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> they don't have to get it past the FDA anymore. I don't know what the who was there at the FDA. Anybody? Most of them were fired yesterday. So, um, uh, but I still think you got to get approval, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Any, although any, health coaching may may be a different right. Yeah, I mean, like, it, there's a lot I don't of know. Apple's I mean, health Gurman features says that are non doctor it, features. Yeah, it says the service would be powered by a new AI agent that would replicate at least to some extent a real doctor. That's when you get in trouble mm -hmm. yeah. when you give advice, right? You know, you really ought to put a salve on that. Or don't worry, it's not cancer. Um, yeah. every, so, every Apple Health feature like, uh, like AFib detection, sleep apnea detection, it's not that, wow, they finally had a breakthrough. It's like, no, they finally got approval from the FDA to be right. able to say, we have detected AFib. Even there, they can't say, here's exactly what you should do right now. And, so, and they very quickly get, you know, get they step back pretty quickly. You know, like, you know, like, like I don't. If you're having anything that's odd, very quickly your phone your phone will tell you that I can't tell you anything. You should need to call your doctor. I mean, like, Go you know, call just, your doctor. Yeah. yeah. The company German says is training the AI agent with data from physicians it has on staff. They are opening a facility near Oakland, California, so physicians can shoot video content for the app. It's also looking for oh dear oh dear a major doctor personality to serve as a host for the new service. Uh, like Dr. Oz, like what? Uh, when he gets fired from the administration, he's going to need a fallback. Maybe it's going to yeah. be Apple. Well, and again, I think that there's 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 this kind of bigger picture of you know it doesn't have to be like here's how to fix here's how to sew up a wound or here's how to <laughs> deal with you know an, an ulcer. But it, there's so many places where you know the vast majority of our health problems are systemic uh, you know bad choices <laughs> by, by us you know like yeah but you know individual. the medical consensus shifts all the time on that stuff uh, and anything that they're going to be allowed to say will be so anodyne as to be useless i mean, I mean you know like it can pretty easily tell I mean, the, the, it it can the thing is is that we're starting to realize that you know everybody's different and i think that the thing is is that it no, it having a bunch of data and then knowing like my my wife can eat as much carbs as she wants. In fact, I think her, her body actually uh, runs better. Like she just, she just, she just feels better when she eats lots and lots of bread. And if I look at bread, I gain 10 pounds, you know, like, mm -hmm. and, and so it's, so I think that un, a, 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 an app that starts to understand what you're like you know, and where, and where you're, you're going with it um, along with, you know, impacting, if you look at recipes five years from now, along with the, you know, being able to, you know, manage a diet, manage fitness, manage, you know, what your, you know, these other things, it can handle a lot of those things that are oftentimes just seen as too complex to deal with, you know, as a, and that's what Apple's good at is taking complexity away from things that people just don't do because it would be too hard. Yeah. Like it'd be too, like, oh, I can't quite figure that out. You know? German says they want to get into food tracking, which would of course Sherlock a number of apps. Yeah. Uh, but, the new Dr. Locke like, AI agent will help users with the nutrition features. See, but again, consensus goes all over the place on this well, stuff. I mean, the bottom line is just don't buy anything in the middle of the, of the, uh, in the middle aisles. Like that's, that's the only food consensus that you really need. <laughs> like, you know, like then that hasn't changed for, you know, a hundred years, you know, like it's. But, but part know. of, but part of this could be, maybe it won't be as complicated. If Apple were to go in this sort of direction to become, I want Apple's role wants to be a little bit more active and proactive in helping people get more healthy or and achieve certain goals. Maybe it could be more along the lines of Apple Fitness, where it's like they're not, it's not an artificial intelligence chatbot that is you're having a consultation with and it's giving you advice. More like by having such a broad 
an in-depth view of the health data of all of its Apple Watch users. It knows what kind of video content it should be creating and putting in this channel and giving to people as resources of, hey, if you're if you're trying to get if your goal is this, here is, or if you if your if your if your doctor has basically put you on like a, a a heart medication for this, here are some things to keep in mind. Here are some stats to track. Here are some activities to try. That in itself would be very interesting. I think. Go, go ahead. Well, all I was going to say is that is that it doesn't. I, I think that it it is um, not even just general. It seeing what you're doing. It can say you're not sleeping well. What do you, and, and if you're tracking what you're eating, it's it, it's going to know what that is, and over time, it can build very complex models about you know if it has all this data, it can you know everything. I mean, because it keeps track of your steps when you just walk on your phone. You know, um, when you're like I was talking to somebody who manages stuff. They said we know what your heartbeat is based on your pace. Like 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 you know like you know there's so much data that is there. Um, that's kind of floating around, but you don't want to share that with other people. But Apple can, you know, start to build a better model of you, of your physical, like what you're sensitive to, what you're not sensitive to, and just the way you move. It can figure out a lot of things, you know, especially when you're telling it a, a little bit of data um, that pins it in. And then it start, and then but then someone says, "Well, I want to lose, you know, I want to lose 20 pounds over the next six months, you know, and design me." Design me a workout schedule, a diet, yeah. that kind of thing, and 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 it could do that. Chat GPT can do that. So yeah, yeah. yeah I yeah. should so, point out that there's increasing evidence that the sleep trackers, among other things, are actually dangerous for people. They make them sleep obsessed. They make them anxious. Yeah. They actually don't improve the sleep. They make the sleep worse. I think sometimes you could actually say too much information is not a good thing when it comes to your health. It, it makes you um, worry about right. things you shouldn't worry Al about. Although, I mean, my counter argument might be that if you've got a really good sleep assistant or health assistant that's, that's machine learning driven and is sort of sitting between you and the data, that's among the things that it could do for you, right? It could say your sleep seems fine. Don't worry about it instead of it, you just obsessing over the data. So there's potentially a place for something that's like an intermediary between you and your data so that you don't you don't look at it and get obsessed with it. I think that's really interesting as a possibility. The first we do, first what we do is build all the data and show a simple data report and get everybody freaked out about the data. And then we build an AI agent that lays on top of the data and says, don't look at the data. Right. <laughs> Great. Yeah. Solved. They call it orthosomnia. And this is an article from the uh, Journal of Clinical Sleep Medicine. Are some patients taking the quantified self too far? And, uh, and that's ex exactly the issue. Um, by the way, 10% of U.S. adults wear, use a wearable fitness sleep tracking device on a regular basis, and 50% of the rest would consider buying one. So it yeah. is a big business, but uh, it does make people anxious. And in fact... You know, it's been my own experience. It does not improve my sleep, and it definitely doesn't improve my day when my uh, watch says, oh, you know, you didn't get a good night's sleep. You should be in a bad <laughs> mood today. Yeah. I, my, my weird thing is I have never, with an Apple Watch, with a Pixel Watch, with a Samsung, every time I've tested some device that's supposed to do sleep tracking, I have never had it give me consistent results. It's <laughs> that's a, another I'm problem, isn't I'm, it? I'm ex I mean, ex I'm expecting, like, uh, like, Okay, so I, I know I've, I, I've probably fell asleep at around 2 in the morning, and now I'm awake, and it's 9 or 10 in the morning, and it will tell me no sleep tracking like uh, data collected. Or, like, you slept for 90 minutes. It's like, not like you slept for 8 hours, and only 90 minutes worth of it was any good. It's like, it's it's just so useless to me. I don't know why uh, that I'm, is. Maybe I've just got furry wrists or something. Yeah, I, <laughs> I find mine to be, like, laser accurate. Like, when I travel, and I'm, I, like, I fly and pull a red eye or something like that, it shows all, it, it lines <laughs> well, up almost Have you compared it to another with, device? For instance, I have an Aura ring. When I wear the Apple Watch and the Aura ring, uh, they do not agree. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. It mostly just agrees with my experience. I have had at one point sleeping. three sleep trackers, because I also had one in my mattress, and it was three different results. Right. Maybe they're better now. I don't know. I guess I, I just feels like it, it just feels like it lines up to put on my watch and my watch just feels like it. it lines up with my experience. That's all. That's, yeah. You know, it's, well, but, but why then when do I'm you need the like watch? The why don't you don't you know no. that you're jet lagged? No, 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 no. It's not. It's it's the 
the it's the deep sleep versus the you know core sleep versus the you know and and really thinking about what what I'm doing to cause one one thing or the other and just kind of generally keeping track of what I'm doing um I find to be very interesting you know like and and I find that my diet and what I do before the show you know what I do the conversations I have the everything else definitely affects the front end of that you know, and, um, and so I, you know, and, and I, when I stopped drinking caffeine you know, in the day, that definitely made a, like, I just looked at how I was sleeping and I was like, okay, I really have to stop by two, <laughs> like, yeah. you know, like not drink yeah. any more caffeine after two o'clock.